The people of the Fertile Crescent were geographically blessed with access to some of the best crops and farm animals in the ancient world. It gave them a huge head start. What had begun with the sowing of wheat and the penning of goats was leading towards the first human civilization. The archaeological site of Guer in southern Jordan is 9,000 years old. But it has all the hallmarks of a town. A few hundred people lived here in rows of houses that were a wonder of technology. Every time I come here, I'm amazed by what those people were doing. Some of the houses have a kind of air conditioning. Uh, this window here is for, to control the air coming from the street inside the house. And the houses, the walls and the floors of the houses from the inside at least were covered with plaster. So people were moving to the concept of homes. It's, it's not a place just to sleep. It is a proper home, and people started to decorate the houses from the, from, from the inside. And people were started to invest in their homes, because if we are talking about plaster, it is time consuming, it's effort consuming. It's very expensive to have plastered house. As villages grew bigger, there were more people to work on the land. More people could produce more food more efficiently, enough to support specialists within the community. Freed from the burden of farming, some people were able to develop new skills and new technologies. Making plaster from limestone was a major technological breakthrough. The stones had to be heated for days at a time, at a temperature of a thousand degrees. It may seem insignificant today, but understanding how to work with fire was the first step towards forging steel, a technology that would transform the world. By contrast, places like New Guinea never developed advanced technology. Even today, some people in the highlands are working in ways that have barely changed for centuries. When I first came to New Guinea in the 1960s, people were still using stone tools like this axe in parts of the island. And before European arrival, people were using stone tools everywhere in New Guinea. So why didn't New Guinea develop metal tools by itself? And eventually I realized that to have metalworking specialists who can figure out how to smelt copper and iron requires that the rest of the people in the society who are farmers be able to generate enough food surpluses to feed them. But New Guinea agriculture was not productive enough to generate those food surpluses. And the result was no specialists, no metal workers, no metal tools. The way of life in New Guinea was perfectly viable. It had survived intact for thousands of years. But according to Diamond, people didn't advance technologically because they spent too much time and energy feeding themselves. And then Westerners arrived and used their technology to colonize the country.
Yet for all its advantages, the Fertile Crescent is not the powerhouse of the modern world, nor is it the breadbasket it once was. How did it lose its head start? Within a thousand years of their emergence, most of the new villages of the Fertile Crescent were abandoned. Ironically, the region had a fundamental weakness. Despite having some of the most nutritious crops on the planet, its climate was too dry and its ecology too fragile to support continuous intensive farming. People were destroying the environment. The waters had been overexploited, the trees had been cut, and this is what, when, when, you, when you face a dead end, I mean, you are facing a wall. You will end with landscape like that. I mean, with, uh, with, with few trees, with no grass, and with less water. So what we are looking at today is the outcome of over-exploiting the environment. Unable to farm their land, entire communities were forced to move on. The advantages they'd accrued from centuries of domestication might have been lost. But again, geography was on their side. The Fertile Crescent is in the middle of a huge landmass, Eurasia. There were plenty of places for farming to spread. And crucially, many of those places were to the east and west of the Fertile Crescent at roughly the same line of latitude. Why is that so important? Because any two points of the globe that share the same latitude automatically share the same length of day, and they often share a similar climate and vegetation. Crops or animals domesticated in the Fertile Crescent were able to prosper at other places along the east-west axis of Eurasia. Wheat and barley, sheep and goats, cows and pigs all spread from the Fertile Crescent, east towards India and west towards North Africa and Europe. Wherever they went, they transformed human societies. Once the crops and animals of the Fertile Crescent reached Egypt, they caused an explosion of civilization. Suddenly, there was enough food to feed the pharaohs and generals, the engineers and scribes, and the armies of people required to build the pyramids. The same is true of European civilization. From ancient times until the Renaissance, crops and animals of the Fertile Crescent fed the artists, inventors, and soldiers of Europe. In the 16th century, the same crops and animals were taken by Europeans to the New World. At the time, there was not a single cow or ear of wheat in all the Americas. Now there are a hundred million cattle in the U.S. alone. And Americans consume 20 million tons of wheat a year. Modern, industrialized America would be unthinkable without the spread of farming from the Fertile Crescent.